I have some exciting news. We are launching a brand new free online course just for the listeners of this podcast. It's a 30-day action-packed course designed to move you along the path to dominating your local self-storage market. We're going to focus on mindset, marketing, move-ins, and making money. Go check it out and get signed up right now over at theselfstorageshow.com. Hi, everyone, and welcome to The Self Storage Show with Jim Ross. Hi, everyone. This is Jim Ross and The Self Storage Show. And today we got a special edition, kind of going the, the vendor spotlight route some more. I got Dan Dotson here. How's it going, Dan? It's going great, Jim. Thanks for having me on your show. I've heard a lot about it, and, and you're doing great work out there. And, you know, the whole industry appreciates it. Good. I, it's it's fun. It's it's. I'm a self-proclaimed storage storage nerd, so <laughs> more I can kind of talk to everyone that's in the industry and you know, get the word out, the better. And when I was actually you know doing this uh, podcast and coming up with the storage show, of course, in the storage industry, being part of auctions, that's an integral part when it comes to running a, a self storage facility. So yeah, I, everyone. It is. When you think of storage auctions, you. Think of you. <laughs> You're kind of the face yeah. of auctions. I'm the last guy you want to see next to your storage unit when you come to pay your bill or not to pay your bill. I, I have a lot of people, uh, you know, they're all the time saying, oh, I paid my bill because I just, I didn't want to see it on storage wars. Okay. <laughs> you know, that's great. I'm, I'm glad the industry's getting paid better because storage wars came along. I, there was a lot of the industry that thought it was going to be horrible for the industry. You know, half of the industry thought, oh, storage wars is going to be bad for us. We can't, uh, you know, we can't expose, you know, what we're doing in the light because it's going to be bad for us and the whole sky is going to fall. And, you know, the sky hasn't fell in eight years. And uh, and I think that it's really made storage kind of a sexy, cool thing. And a lot of people, a lot of people love storage now. They didn't even think about it before. And, yeah. and there's a lot of shows and sitcoms and people are including storage scenarios and stuff all the time in their in their TV shows. So it's storage is is becoming even more integral part of the american life and uh you know americans we like our stuff people <laughs> all over the world do yeah, we, and, do. Uh, we just we want to keep our stuff safe and and the storage industry has been great for that you know they keep our stuff safe yeah you hit on us it's hard to make storage sexy that's <laughs> that is right i do, right. do do our best what we can to make a twist on it and make it sexy as possible Hey man, nothing wrong with a little sexy, Jim. Oh, exactly. Uh, yeah, with the the auctions we were talking about earlier, I was running a storage auction company back in the past, and I remember when Storage Wars first came out and just that hype, and just how many people start showing up to the everybody wanted to get auctions. in on the action, and you know the self storage industry, the auctions did really great there for about a year or so. I mean, they just blew up. Some of my clients fired me because I had too many people at the auctions, and and if you're ever gonna get fired. Get fired because you're doing too good. Yep, yep. That's the best way to, that's the best way to go out. And uh, but anyway, we've been we've been happy with the whole ride of the whole thing. And it seems like all the crowds and stuff are about normal. You know, about it's kind of leveling off. Yeah, yeah. No, it's kind of leveling off. But it's it, all good. But it, you're exactly right when you were mentioning you don't want to get my stuff sold. It, I think it raised awareness of pay your bill. <laughs> you know, as, a, as an bill. operator and as, as a regional manager for what we're seeing sites. I think this brought the awareness of, yeah, there's an actual consequence of not paying your bill. Got to pay yeah. your bill. A lot of people before the show, you know, they would call me up and they'd say, I'm trying to get my personal stuff back and they had no right selling my stuff. Well, they do have a right to sell your stuff if you're not going to pay your bill. You know, there's certain procedures in every state that you can go through and properly, you know, turn somebody's assets into your own assets and, and pay the bill and get it moved out. And I mean, the industry really just wants people to pay their bill. And that's it. They don't really care about the stuff. They just yeah. don't care about the space. You know? Sure. So anyway, it's it's been positive. I think storage wars has been super positive on the industry. And, uh, the whole world, actually. You know, we're we're in three hundred million homes a week with storage wars. Wow. You're not going to believe this, but we're in two hundred countries and thirty one languages with storage wars. Do you ever watch yourself in a different language? Yeah, it's a, it's a trip. It's a trip. It's a trip. <laughs> I bet it is. Yeah, it's a trip. And some of those cats are really, really good. In Latin America alone, we're in 60 million homes a week. And uh, oh, we're yeah. huge there. Uh, Laura and I and some of the other cast went to Mexico City a couple of years ago. And yeah. we had, I don't know, five or 6,000 people waiting for us just to take a photo with us. And, and we took photos for five hours with, like, at least 2,000 or 2,500 photos. Holy cow. 
and and the Latin Latin Americans are uh, you know they're very uh, affectionate. So you know you got to <laughs> hug everybody and kiss everybody. And there was there was one little lady that uh, her people said that she drove four or five hours and then stood in line for three or four hours just to get a picture with us. And she was like in her 80s or 90s, and and she was just a very fragile little lady. But uh, storage wow. wars was her was her jam, you know. And uh, she wanted to come and see us. So it was oh. amazing. I don't know. There's people that are. They're addicted, man. <laughs> They're all about yeah. it. Uh, yeah, I, it's, it's kind of like a drug. Well, I'm, I'm just curious, how did, before Storage Wars, I mean, obviously you're an auctioneer and all that, how did you even get in the auctioneer business in the first place? It's a great question. My uh, my grandfather was an auctioneer, auctioneer in northwest Arkansas, and my mom was an auctioneer. So, you know, I used to go back and spend every summer with my grandpa when I was like 8, 9, 10, 11 years old. In yeah. 74, I was 11, and I... I looked at grandpa and I said, I want to be just like you. I want to learn how to do this auctioning. And, uh, and you know, three weeks later I was hearing my, my name on the radio and I was seeing my name in print for some auctions that we had in Northwest Arkansas at the time. Yeah. And uh, I still have some of those flyers from seventies. It just hooked me. And, uh, when I was in high school here in Southern California, I, I used to have this KZ 400 motorcycle and I would ditch school on Thursdays. I'd go down to the Chino (laughs) auction. The old men would let me uh, sell furniture and stuff on Thursdays. And and then when I graduated high school, I started whipping pigs. And if I whip pigs for an hour, I could sell goats for two hours. And and I just started selling goats and birds and every damn thing. And and I I just never looked back. It's been great. I I didn't know maybe go down the animal route, but okay. (laughs) Right, yeah, I went the animal route. I had a guy show up at one of my sales uh, a couple years ago, and he had three kids with him, and he says, uh, he goes, I remember you at Solomon's Auction. That was this little auction that sold, like, building material and birds and he goes you sold my dad some four by fours do you remember that and i'm thinking no bastard i don't remember that you know i'm glad you remember that but i don't remember that but you it know, was it's impactful on him how, how it transcends through uh, you know the generations and stuff and i've had a lot of buyers that have been around me for decades and they were little kids when they first started coming around now they're grown-ass men and and it just gives you a good feeling you know about your industry and about what you're doing and jeez we mm-hmm. just started um we just started putting stuff on YouTube in 07 and 08. And yeah. In 2009, when the economy took uh, took a dive, uh, ABC and NBC and KCT news agencies all got a hold of Laura and I, like within a 45-day period of time. They wanted to do a thrift economy story. They wanted to feature American auctioneers because I was the only... I was the only cat on YouTube because I wanted to show my clients, hey, I'm a better auctioneer. I'm a third generation auctioneer. I've got decades of experience and, yeah. and I love what I'm doing. And, and once that happened and all three of those hit, we had we had 27 production companies and networks contact us over the next 18 months. And we were in three, two different contracts before we kept to our third one, which is, uh, you know, with original productions and Tom Beers. He was the third one. And, wow. Uh, so it don't matter what you got going out there. if. Uh, if it's not working and you keep slinging the stuff, it's going to stick eventually. Just like, you know, Tim, me, you know about that. Tell me about it, yeah. <laughs> right? Just keep slinging it, and uh, pretty soon it sticks, and, and hopefully somebody likes it. And uh, With Storage Wars, you know, it's, huh. just, it's just really like what's in the box, because you never really know what's in the box. These aren't blind auctions, but, you know, somebody needs to have a little experience to tell if something is good quality or not good quality, and you can only tell what you don't see by what you do see so you have to kind of deduce what might be in there and what the value might be from what you do see and oh, yeah. there's just lots of tricks and lots of trial and error for these buyers when we first started storage wars a lot of the a lot of the industry didn't have a lot of um they didn't they didn't have a lot of respect for these buyers you know they they called them like vultures and you know wagon pickers or whatever. I and, uh, the test of that yeah I didn't like that for personally because I like a lot of these buyers that feed their families and they, they work hard and I, I watch them out there in the sun and I, I watch them, you know, sometimes do good, sometimes do bad. That's but, their profession. You know, the good buyers, they take their lumps and they just keep coming back yeah. and they keep those things cleaned out and I don't think enough love goes out to the buyers personally. No, I, I, exactly. I mean, when I ran my own, you know, oxy company back in the day, you get to know these guys because it's the same crew well, all the time that kind of goes around mm-hmm. to different sites. and Right. You never meet more hardworking people in your life. I mean, that, that's that's what they do. I mean, they they're, they're that's true. They hustle. They that's work hard. And it's great. Some of them even die in the unit cleaning them out. I've had two of them do that over the years. You know. Are you are you, you kidding know, friends, me? You know. No, I'm not kidding you. Uh. Uh-uh. Oh no, my god. I'm gosh. not kidding you. You know those units can get hot. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
one was a longtime buyer and it was 106 degrees down in Palm Springs and he just oh. uh, he's had himself a heart attack cleaning it out. So everybody, when you're cleaning out these units in the heat, you gotta, you gotta stay hydrated. Hydrate, hydrate. <laughs> stay cool. You know, don't, don't work yourself. And if, you know, if you're 45, 55, 65, 75 years old, you know, take some help with you and don't be grabbing hold of the heavy stuff. And, you know, it's important. Uh, and we all, we all have stories about, you know, like we just said, you never know what's in the units and all of that. And that's the element of, you know, the auctions too, especially from a buyer standpoint, you know, you never know. And I got to tell you a personal story. I know we're talking about you, but personal story is I was managing a property. It was my very first manager. I was the manager at the site. And my very first auction, my very first unit. It'll, it'll never happen ever again. Right. It, was, it was all full of boxes and blankets. You, you couldn't tell what was in it. And roll out the door. And we, it was all legit. Everything was great. Sold it for 50 bucks. I'm like, all right, come back to the office. We'll, we'll uh, settle up. I came back to the office and the guy came in. He was tears coming down his face. I thought of, he found a body or something. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's my first auction. He's like, uh, you're never going to guess what was in this unit. I'm like, okay. Go down, take a look. He takes the blanket off. And I know nothing about motorcycles, but apparently it was one of the original first editions, Harley Davidson's. Like a 38 or an 09, I guess. He, he hardly came out in 09, but. Oh, he was just going nuts over it. It was some vintage type of thing. I have no idea. And that's, did it look like a bicycle? Did it look like a bicycle? bicycle. Or a motorcycle? Yes, no, like a bicycle. Yeah, the older ones, man. The ones pre 1914, those are the ones that just look like bicycles. And some yeah. of those can be worth two, three, four hundred thousand bucks. Yeah. Okay. Right. I have no idea what he sold it for, but and this guy was about ready to have a heart attack in front of me. We, we went through the whole process, and he got it free and clear. It'll never happen ever again, but that was my You know, everything first happens at least once somewhere, and oh, it, it sounds like you've got a great story. I have stories that I carry around for decades because oh, they're great stories, and I always say it happened the other day, but sometimes it could have been 10 years ago. <laughs> you know? well, well, for the, as big as your, for your business is, again, everyone just thinks, you know, storage wars and that's it. No, you guys run an auction house. They're yeah, we have American an auction service that, that yeah. we run, and uh, we've got uh, I've got six or eight auctioneers that are out all the time. I've got two or three auctioneers out just about every day, and a uh, full office staff. You know, we've got three people in the office, and I've got another four people that do marketing for us. So, you know, American Auctioneers and StorageAuctions.net, we we are always pounding the pavement, always trying to you know get more buyers at our auctions, and we're always doing things. You know, we always have bulk auctions we've been doing a lot of car auctions and collections lately mm -hmm. um we sold a uh, nine hundred and seventy thousand dollars worth of corvettes a couple of years ago uh, one collection 26 cars that was oh, great. Yeah. we just went up to uh, newcastle california and, and a boy had passed away and he had 55 cars so we sold that and uh wow you know we just we like to go out and sell stuff and you know i like to I like to develop buyers around me. So if somebody's, you know, got the interest and they want to buy and sell, then, you know, they just need to remember, go out and spend a dollar and try to turn it into three. If you can buy something for a dollar and sell it for three, you're always going to do good with that. And, yeah. and if it's a bigger increment, it's really all relative. You can make a little less money. I mean, you could spend 5,000 and go make a thousand, be pretty happy with that. You know, as long as you can just roll it over, use your head, yeah. Yeah. network, network with other buyers and wholesalers around you. I mean, there's lots of tricks. But. And that, and that, you're exactly right. Use your head. You, know, you see a lot of newbies that kind of come in from the auction buyers, and they just think right. it's, it's. They think it's easy. You know, I'm gonna buy this unit and I'll flip it, and eh, no problem. Right. There's an art to it. You know, you gotta be there smart is, about. There is an art to it, and it seems like all the best buyers in all the best areas, they all have one thing that they do. Every time a good auction comes through, they buy it. They don't let anybody from out of town or out of the area or new buy that good unit even if they don't make money on it they're gonna they're gonna take that and take it out of the mouth of whoever it is that might benefit from that yep. and if they buy if they try to buy the best unit that they see every time in their area uh, chances are good they're gonna get some great stuff oh yeah of course yep exactly and so that's that's your your live auctions and are you mostly in california our live Wisconsin? auctions are mostly in california okay. and arizona uh, we their storage auctions .net is a nationwide uh, yeah. portal platform and we have 309 thousand subscribers nationwide and it grows every day so it's storage auctions .net. once somebody signs up as a buyer there um, they'll receive uh, 
uh, free updates every time somebody books a live or an online auction, and it's free to the sellers. If okay. you know, like you're a third-party management company, there's a lot of different ways that you could use storageauctions.net. One way, if you wanted to go back to live auctions, but you thought that maybe you would like more competition, we have a, a pre-bid thing where you okay. can register as an auctioneer on our site. You can run pre-bid auctions and cut those off the day before or the morning of the sale. And then you will know who, who won it online and what their max bid is. And then you can take that to your live auction and say, okay, you can open up the unit and say, okay, I've got $300 for this unit. You might have a five or $600 um, you know, max bid on it, but you can protect that. You know, you can say, okay, I've got $300 to your live crowd and you want to go 350. Okay, I got 350 live, but I do have 400 with my max bid here. And you can protect that up to $500 and then notify them after the auction. And then they have 24 hours, just like a online auction to come in and pay for it no it's kind of the best of both worlds for the online i'm the only guy live. that does that no I, I i've never really thought of that that's great i know i thought of that <laughs> and i spent about 25 grand to make it work and we are um we're huh. about two weeks away from having uh, the only sellers app in the whole game which um Right now, you can take a cell phone and you can go out and you can book our auctions with storageauctions.net from your phone as long as you have Wi-Fi. Okay. But pretty soon, you're not even going to need Wi-Fi because I have this cool app that uh, they're just taking the bugs out of it right now. Yeah. And um, I had a meeting this morning on it, so I'm all excited about my app. I've been working on it for a few months, and and we're getting we're getting right right to where it's going to be available on iTunes uh, with Android or Apple and uh, uh, built by a professional company. And yeah. So I'm excited. So I, mean, I would imagine that just means like your 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 inventory in a unit, like taking yeah, pictures and just upload it right from the, the app. And... You can you can shoot the photos right there. You can book the auction. You can set it huh. up, and as soon as you get to Wi-Fi, it'll kachink kachink. It'll go online, and you'll be able to see it. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. So that is one thing that a third-party management can use, you know, storageauctions.net for, and just your timed auctions. You know, it's just like just like all the other sites. It it has a close, uh, a soft close, which means that if it gets down to the last minute and somebody tries to Skype it at the end, yeah. it'll just keep extending it a minute. It's called a soft close. Oh. So as soon as everybody's done bidding, then it'll close out, and and whoever wins it uh, gets their credit card charged ten percent. Then they get a unique. Uh, a unique email along with the manager saying, hey, uh, Joe Frank over here bought this unit number one, two, three for a hundred bucks or whatever. And okay. uh, here's his unique number. And only Frank and the manager will have a unique number. So you, the manager will know it's the right person coming in trying to claim the unit because they'll have a unique number on their email. This is part of our security. Gotcha. Okay. That's, yeah, yeah, I got that verification. So that makes sense. So yeah, you kind of glossed over it, but I just want to hit it. How does it work as far as uh, you know, fees and all that go for the buyer and the and the Thank you. Uh, thanks facility. for asking. Uh, it's yeah. absolutely free to the seller. You know, when uh, Laura okay. and I first started uh, Storage Wars, and um, we started, we helped. Um, we were charter folks with Treasures, which is uh, one of the other. Uh, storage places out there that does online auctions yeah. and we built it up to about 700,000 people and uh, we um, you know we were very incremental on designing it and developing it but I didn't really like the way that it was going so uh, Laura and I decided we will just do our own and huh. um, and we will just make it free to the seller and there's no cancellation fees and if you book an auction and you want to take it off you can do that and um, you know there's no penalty for that or there's no charge for that and the actual the buyers nice. pay for, uh, a buyer's premium they, they pay a 10 percent buyer's premium and we charge all of our buyers the same some of the other sites mm -hmm. will charge some buyers one amount and then if you want to pay a monthly dues or something you can pay another amount i just think that's all pretty cheesy personally you know i like a very transparent system and everybody pays the same everybody has the same information and, yeah. and that's it you know transparent keep it simple that's <laughs> Keep it simple, That's stupid. So... Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So no, so for for the seller then no fees. That's fantastic. Cool. It it it's you, you got fantastic. my wheels going. That's awesome. Hey man, good. That's what I said <laughs> it for. And uh, you know, and we're always available, and we always have people that can walk people through the sign up process. It's really easy. I mean, with our site storageauctions.net. Thanks for letting me go on about it. By the way, um, it takes about yeah. two minutes to claim your site and. Uh, once you claim your site, then you can register as a manager or an owner, and you can list live auctions for free. If you have a live auctioneer, you can put the auctions on there, and hmm. whoever is in your area will get an automatic email uh, telling them you know, when the live auction is going to be and where it's going to be. You won't be able nice. to put any photos on there, but if you do online auctions, you can add up to 20 photos, and, and it's pretty slick. It's easy. 
Super nice. easy. And you can put a regular unit number. You can put an alternate unit number on there just in case you, you've got a big tool unit full of tools and it's unit number one, two, three. You don't want everybody to know it's one, two, three. You don't three. want to advertise, yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe that guy will pay up his unit and you don't want somebody to come in there and rob it. So we, we give you the opportunity to do an alternate number. So you can just call it a one or an A or whatever you want to call okay. it. I highly yeah. recommend that. I've, I've, I've been on that case yeah. before when it, it's, it's right. been, uh, there's privacy issues. You still got to, even though they're late and you're going through the collection process, you still got to be very adamant about privacy as much as possible. Yeah, you, so. you got to be because there's a lot of slickies out there. A lot of people uh, you yeah. know, always trying to take advantage of somebody. So we always have to try to be one step ahead of that. Yep. Good. Well, going back to uh storage wars real quick. What's the, what's the update there? What's going on with storage wars? Thanks for asking. Uh, yeah. We finished uh, filming a couple of weeks ago for season 12. And uh, I think the new shows are coming out in August and uh, all your old favorite players and storage warriors are still around. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of people ask me two questions. Is Dave really an ass? And yeah, he really <laughs> is. And have you kicked him off the show yet? No, I, it's really above my pay grade to kick him off the show. <laughs> He's kind of like a, I tell people that Dave's kind of like a bad rash. You know, you look down and it's gone, right? And then all of a sudden, psh, there it is. <laughs> it pops right back up again. <laughs> yeah, so, you know. But yeah, it's back. It's back strong. And I think uh, there's going to be 16 shows that you folks haven't seen. And I, I think everybody's going to be excited. Oh, it, it's fun. I mean, again, there, there's, like I said, entertainment value, obviously, for it. But again, just being the storage nerd, I'm always watching it for just the storage aspect of it so right no right i love it so no again thanks for your time and you got a lot going on with storage wars and live auctions and the online auctions which i'm gonna check out so just one more time for clarity give us those domains again where people can go and check it out well thanks jim and uh remember that your uh, self storage show is is like a number one show because you may be the only one out. i might be the only one so no right. competition yeah <laughs> Right. We do live auctions in the state of California, Arizona, and Nevada with AmericanAuctioneers.com. AmericanAuctioneers.com. If you like to buy anything from tools to companies to estates to bulk warehouses full of stuff, we, st we sell stuff like that all the time. We have a nationwide uh, self-storage auction platform called StorageAuctions.net. It's free to sign up. It's free to search. Uh, if you see something you want to bid on, then... Uh, You'll have to put a credit card up, and upon winning the bid, you'll get charged 10%. You got to pay the lady 10%, then you'll get an email. You can go pay and pick up your unit within 24 hours. That's the way it works. Storageauctions.net. Sign up. There are no, uh, there's no seller's fees. There's no cancellation fees. Pretty That's slick. It. All right. Well, thanks, good. Man. Well, thanks for the Jim, time. Thank you for having me on your show, and uh, and I want to thank all your fans out there for watching Storage Wars and uh, and being good stewards of the self storage industry. Perfect. All right. I appreciate it. We'll do this again. It was fun. Let's do it again. All Thank right. you. Take care. Later. Bye-bye. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for listening. As a thank you, I want to invite you to a free one-on-one -on -one confidential strategy session with me. We're going to take a good look at your self-storage business and help you identify exactly what's working and what's not and how to improve your results fast. So head over to theselfstorageshow.com to schedule some time.